Dendens TV. This is the Den Daily bringing you all the latest gossip, views, and transfer news from in and around the Den. Today, we're going to delve into a little bit of a different video. The news was broke yesterday, but it was sort of again overshadowed by us signing Leah Roberts, another goalkeeper, and Neil Harris's fifth summer signing. We're going to talk today a little bit about something we do discuss on this channel quite a lot, and it really, really grates on me. But I can understand in this situation why what's happened has happened. It's the news that Josh Stevenson, the under-18s captain, is to leave Millwall Football Club and join Brentford on a five-year contract. It's really, really upsetting news. It is upsetting and we have this chat all the time that why do we not nurture enough players? Why do not enough players get the opportunities in our first team? But I think in this instance, it's very difficult for the club and I think they've probably done all that they can. They've offered him a pro contract and himself and Cavalli Hayward, probably the best two players out of that under 18 team, have not yet signed those contracts. And obviously now we can see why Josh Stevenson didn't sign it. Let's hope that we don't lose Cavalli Hayward as well because he's a really, really big, strong and powerful striker that knows where the net is. But look, this has happened a few times before and we say, you know, why do we have these players for so long? Local lads, why do we nurture them and bring them through and spend years developing them, but then they never get a chance in the first team. To be fair, it's a little bit shades of when I said about Ida Mo Matthew the other day, why he's not had so many opportunities under Neil Harris. And I think Josh Stevenson, even more so with his age, he's never played in the first team. Yes, he's an exciting talent. I'll be honest, I've not seen loads of him. I watch a lot of the 21s, not so much the 18s. I know they have had the good cup runs over the last couple of years, and I did watch a couple of their games away at Leeds, and um, again at home, I think he might have been against Chelsea. Um, that's something that going forward next season, I'm looking into to, to rectify, but I'll go into that hopefully if that comes off in another video. But look, people are saying, why have we not already signed him? Why has he not already got this massive long-term contract? Well, okay, maybe yes, but at the same time, you can't go throw in five-year contracts of people if they're not really at that level. He's highly rated, yes. He's come of age in the under-18s over the last season, but maybe he wasn't at the stage a year or two ago where you can offer him a five-year contract. Even if you do, he's then got to accept that contract, and I guess that you know he obviously had other irons in the fire and he was keeping his options open, and that's why now he'll probably be going to Brentford. Will we get any money for it? Well, he hadn't signed a pro contract, so I'm saying no. I'm not completely sure. Maybe someone can help me out with that in the comments. People are saying we will be compensated. And I've delved a little bit further back into similar situations that have happened over recent years. Let's start with Darko Yebi. The central midfielder was bought, poached, taken by Manchester City a few years ago, reportedly for around a seven-figure sum. So I'm assuming he either A, had signed a contract professional or it went to a tribunal. He now is on loan at Plymouth for the entire season upcoming from Leeds. He never made the grade at Man City and um, as I said, yeah, he's now at Plymouth under Wayne Rooney. He's there this season. He was there for summer last season. He obviously impressed. They like what they saw and Wayne Rooney has returned to get his services at Home Park. Next up is Samuel Adozi. Now I've looked on Transfer Market and it says that Samuel Adozi, who came through the youth system and is from Lewisham, joined Manchester City in 2019 for a round, if transfer market is believed to be correct, £600,000. Again, he never made the grade at Man City, but went on to get an £8 million move-ish to Southampton, where he's doing well for them at the top end of the championship. And of course, now in the Premier League after they beat Leeds at Wembley. Next up is more recent, of course, Zach Lovelace became Mill's second ever Youngest player when he came off the bench a couple of seasons ago away at Coventry. Another one that sort of come out of nowhere. And I think that was, was it down to a lot of injuries within the squad? I'd seen a lot of the 21 strikers, um, Tom Lee in particular. And Lovelace seemed to bypass all of those, come straight into the first team. Done quite well for us, looked like a real talent. But then left Mill Football Club again. It says on transfer market that was a fee of £118,000. And he went north of the border to Glasgow Rangers. Can you blame these youngsters for going to bigger clubs 
No, with the Josh Stevenson one, someone said on the comments, why has he gone to Brentford? Well, he hasn't gone yet, but I think it's going to happen. Why is he going to Brentford? They're no bigger than us. Fan base wise, yes, and maybe 10 years ago, mate, I understand what you're saying, but they are now an established Premier League side with a brilliant recruiting system and a brilliant manager in Thomas Frank. So it's no surprise that these players want to move on to bigger deals, bigger leagues, and get better money. Is there a slight hint off, though? And I'm not so sure, but it was picked up in the comments, so I'll, so I'll go with it. People saying, well, would you expect these youngsters don't get the opportunities in that first team? So can you blame them for, for going elsewhere and pursuing a career? No, because I think in the circumstances of all those players, especially the two that went to Man City, they're going to find it a lot harder to get in their first teams than they are to get into our first teams. Neil Harris was in a situation last season where he had to go with what he knew, he had to go with experience, and then there wasn't really that opportunity for youngsters. We're a, we're a club, really, that we're either just outside the playoffs in the eight years we've been back in the championship, or we're near the bottom. So we, we never get that buffer with maybe being safe with 10, 15 games to go. Can't go up, can't go down. It's real football club. It's never boring, is it? So, you know, if that happens, then maybe some of these youngsters could get the opportunities. And I've been frustrated at points when they haven't been given them. But I don't think that really would have factored into Josh Stevenson's decision. It will be a massive shame if we lose him. As I said, fee-wise, he hadn't signed a professional contract. So as far as I know, he'll go for nothing. However, it may go to a tribunal and Mill will maybe compensate in some way, shape or form. So maybe it's not so much that we don't bring the right players through. As I said, Catford, Lewisham, uh, I'm not sure where Lovelace was from, but he's playing for Glebe before he joined Millwall. So that's just over by Chiselhurst's way. So we are finding them. And it's frustrating because we can't seem to win. We either nurture them, they're not good enough, and they're not going to play in the National Leagues, or they're too good and they get taken before they ever get a sniff of our first team. I do think that this season for Neil Harris is a massive chance to give Adam Malaki, Tom Leahy, Romain Essay, and Ida Moamaku much more game time. And I think we can learn from previously what's happened. You know, the PSV Eindhoven thing, if they want a Maku, well, let him come and get him at the end of next season when he's proved himself in the championship and his stock's gone a lot higher than it currently is. But another Millwall youngster, the captain in the under 18s, Josh Stevenson, is set to leave the club and follow a long line off of our production line into going into the Premier League and, and trying to make that step up. They don't always succeed, but um, good luck to him. It's, it's his decision. And, and I said, 18 years old, I don't think you can really. Blame him. I'll see you tonight for a live stream from 6.30pm. We open our pre-season account against Nottingham Forest in Mercia. Please subscribe to Lions TV. Come on, you Lions.